Monster Hunter Sunbreak will no doubt bring a ton of new features to the game, especially in the realm of moves for the hunter. Like I talked about in my previous video, the Switch skills in Monster Hunter Rise are a great way to really explore the weapons in ways that haven't been done before, and there's no surprise that Sunbreak will continue to expand on the system. The only thing we don't know is how many new Switch skills each weapon will get, since every weapon could get one new skill for all we know. For the sake of this video and speculation, I'm just going to work with the assumption that each weapon will get the same amount of switch skills as they did in Base Rise, two moveset switch skills and one silkbind switch skill, just so I can cover all of my bases. Realistically, I think in Sunbreak we will probably only get one new moveset skill and one new silkbind. Speaking of this video, today, I am starting a series going through all 14 weapons in Monster Hunter and speculating about the new switch skills we could get in Sunbreak. If I make one video talking about each weapon individually, it will take me well into Sunbreak's marketing campaign, which is when we will probably already know or have an idea about the switch skills in the game. So to make sure I'm able to talk about all of the weapons before this speculation becomes obsolete, I'm going to cover two or three weapons each week, which will take us probably into the start of Sunbreak's marketing campaign. Without any more delay, let's get started with talking about the Greatsword and the Longsword. Let's start off by looking at the Wirebug Switch skills for the Greatsword. By default, the Silkbind move for Greatsword is Hunting Edge, a move that launches you on the monster and vault off them, resulting in a couple different charge moves you can do, like the Charged Plunging Thrust and the Jumping Charged Slash. The replacement for this switch skill is the Adamant Charged Slash, which allows you to move forward with the Greatsword a good distance and right into a strong Charged Slash that has super armor. The last switch skill Greatsword has is the Power Sheath, a move that allows the user to quickly move in a direction and sheath their Greatsword, buffing them when they sheath it. Power Sheath is more than a buff, but it also provides a quick movement burst in any direction to avoid being hit, so a replacement option would either provide those same evasive attributes or have something else that makes for a good trade-off. Since a lot of the switch skills we see in Rise have inspiration from Generations Ultimate, let's look there for what a new silkbind for Greatsword could be. When looking for an evasive move, it's best to look at Adept Style, since that hunting style revolved around evading and counter-attacks. After performing an Adept Evade while playing Greatsword, the user had the ability to run in any direction they chose. If the user wanted to, they could hold the X button to charge their greatsword while running and perform a very strong ground slash that could then be comboed into a strong charged slash. In Sunbreak, this silkbind could function very similar to Dual Blade's Shrouded Vault, where the greatsword player can perform a short distance evasive move to get away and heal, but if they get hit they can parry and perform the running charge to get right back into the hunt. Another move from Generations Ultimate that can work well as a silkbind move is Moonbreaker, a move where the player uses the weight of the greatsword to launch themselves in the air to perform a deadly spin in the air. This move is relatively straightforward and could consist of the greatsword player throwing a line into the air and allowing the player to charge it like with the hammer silkbinds and then perform the spin as the hunter launches themselves at the monster. The next area of switch skills to discuss are the moveset switch skills. Currently, the Switch Skills Greatsword have changed the Tackle into Guard Tackle and True Charge Slash into Rage Slash, so looking at these skills it's unlikely that Sunbreak will change those moves more than they have. Looking at Generations Ultimate, there are still a few moves that could become Switch Skills. Aerial Greatsword was a playstyle that not many people played with, but it was a very fun way to play the weapon. In Rise, we kind of already have Aerial Style with Hunting Edge, However that move isn't really a good silkbind because of how expensive it is, and that adamant charge slash is the better option, not to mention you can have a similar effect as hunting edge by sheathing your weapon and performing a normal aerial charge. Generations ultimate aerial style had a move where inputting forward and X with the weapon sheathed would allow you to perform a leaping slash, however there was really no point behind this move besides it was a good draw attack for the style. The reason I bring this move up is because it has the potential to function very similarly to Sword and Shield Sliding Slash, where it allows the player to vault off of the monster and perform a variety of charged aerial moves. 
This move could replace the wide slash, allowing it to quickly be used after a charge to vault off of a monster. The next move from Generation's Ultimate I can see becoming a switch skill is the ground slash, a hunter art that functions a lot like the Adept Evade I mentioned earlier, but it doesn't charge and you perform it while stationary. This is more of a simple substitution, so it can replace the rising slash, since both of them are relatively similar moves. This addition would also promote an uncharged playstyle, but I have the feeling that this switch skill would be one of the less used ones. Currently, Longsword has some okay switch skills. Other than Double Drawn Slash, Longsword's switch skills are a pretty good example of the concept. Looking at the Silkbind moves, Longsword has the Soaring Kick, which is a popular choice because it allows you to perform the Spirit Helmbreaker, and the Sakura Slash, a lunging attack that fills your gauge one level and is able to do a lot of elemental damage. The last Silkbind Longsword has is Serene Pose, a counter that allows you to spend a spirit level and quickly replenish it. I can't really think of what a new silkbind for longsword could be, since it really covers its basis well already. The best I can come up with is probably some kind of lunging sweep that gives you super armor and maxes your spirit gauge, or even a move where you attach the wire bug on a monster for a cool effect like lance or dual blades. Even though I can't really think of a new silkbind for longsword, don't think I can't think of other switch skills it could have. In Generations Ultimate, the most popular hunting style for most weapons was Valor style, and for good reason. On top of giving every weapon a special sheath animation that seriously reduced damage taken, it also provided many great changes to weapons, to the point that for most it became the template when redesigning the weapons in World. Longsword was no exception to this, and the popular nature of Valor Longsword gave birth to the counters that we see in Longsword today. Because of this, I can see a couple Valor moves being introduced back into the Longsword as switch skills. Valor Longsword functioned very differently from the traditional Longsword. While the Longsword traditionally has three levels on its spirit gauge, Valor Longsword only had. Charging the Valor spirit gauge required you to fill up the Valor gauge, but when you did it greatly improved the damage dealt with Longsword. This system could be implemented as a switch skill in Sunbreak, where the spirit gauge takes a lot longer to fill, but once you fill it you receive a much stronger attack and speed boost to the weapon. This also works really well with switch skills like Sakura Slash, since it would be a bad idea to Helmbreaker spam with this playstyle. Another idea for a switch skill that Longsword could get is the Valor Guard Point. This guard point was a very powerful tool at Longsword's disposal, and allowed it to dash forward and perform the Spirit Reckoning combo. As a switch skill, this can replace the regular IAI counter and allow the user to counter and counter attack opposed to an evade. The last idea for a switch skill for the Longsword I have actually comes from World and Iceborne. In World and Iceborne, the only way to perform the Spirit Helmbreaker was to perform the Spirit Thrust, a move where you stab the longsword into your target and leap up into the air to deliver the Helmbreaker. In Sunbreak, it's not a good idea to move this move exactly as is, since it would completely invalidate the use of the Sparking Kick and lead to Helmbreaker being even more spammable than it already is. Instead, the Spirit Thrust can be modified so that instead of launching upwards, the user rips the longsword upwards out of the monster in the same way that Switch Axe does in its Clutch Claw attack. As a switch skill, this move could replace the Fade Slash, since you lose the quick evasion that Fade Slash provides in exchange for a more aggressive attack that can greatly build the spirit gauge. Greatsword and Longsword are two weapons that already have pretty well-established playstyles, but it's still interesting to look at some of the more unique moves and abilities weapons have had in the past and how we could see them in Sunbreak. If you enjoyed this bit of speculation, then please consider supporting my channel, and if you have your own speculation about the switch skills for Greatsword and Longsword we could see in Sunbreak let me know in the comments. I'm going in order of the website for this series, so next week I'm going to be going over the sword and shield and the dual blades. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this and I'll see you soon.